The grace of our beloved Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. I am Pastor Marty Ringer, and welcome to St. Mark's Sunday Service. Now, we hear in the scripture all the time that we are free, free indeed, when we follow Jesus Christ. But the question is, but what's next? After we are set free, what is next? I pray that this service and sermon answers that for you. May the peace of the Lord be with you.
Death has been defeated. He is our victory. Bless me, bless me, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these hosts with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these hosts with me, God, have everything they need. Let all these hosts with me, God, have everything they need. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, by nature, we are connected to sin. Lord God, in our nature, we turn our face from you. Lord God, in our nature, we don't believe the love and the forgiveness of you. Lord God, Hear us as we confess our sins, saying together. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority alone, I declare all of your sins are forgiven, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel reading for Reformation Day is the heart of our faith. It's the Gospel of Christ, the good news that makes us free. Now, it's not the church or any one church that is true. Rather, it is Jesus Christ who is the truth, and the truth is what sets us free. Now, hear the Gospel of our Lord as it is written in John the 8th chapter starting at the 31st verse down to the 36 and we say glory to you O Lord then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him if you continue in my word you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free they answered him we are descendants of Abraham I have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say, Praise to you, O Christ. Anybody want to be free? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, I know we come from a tradition where in this country, some of our people were enslaved. Yeah. We didn't have a choice. But I want you to know that today you can choose to be free. I'm not just talking about free of physical chains and bondage. I'm talking about freeing your mind, freeing your spirit. I want you to know that Christ can set you free. And the Bible says that whom he set free.
Listen in this moment. You can choose to be free. You don't have to let those chains of what happened to you before keep binding you and what, what your mother said and what your father said and what your teacher said and what your auntie said. You can be free. Just sing with us. Sing, I'm free indeed. Just say, I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. See, I choose to be free. I'm free indeed. I'm free. In Christ, I'm free indeed. Was blind, but now I see. It's who I'm meant to be. I'm free indeed. Thank God, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding who I choose to be. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this Reformation Sunday, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to reform our souls and our minds and our understanding, Lord God, as you reform the church. Lord God, we thank you for another Sunday. Lord God, I ask you to Remove me from this space, Lord God, and you enter to speak to your sheep, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. In your holy name, amen. So as, you know, most Sundays I like to start with, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. But I also want to say that today is the first day of the rest of your life. Of course, we hear that. But, you know, we I don't know if we really believe that. I understand that the things that we do today affect tomorrow, not so much the things that we did yesterday. It's the things that we do today. In this passage, you know, Jesus is explaining to these the ones that believed in him. That's what the scripture says. So he's explaining to them in a sense that if you are freed by him, you are free indeed. And all of us are enslaved by sin. But before we get, before we get too far, too deep into this, I want to ask the question, what is really being free? What is the understanding of us being free because a lot of us don't even understand how we are enslaved right now now i know as african americans we always think about years 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 packed back in our history but at the same time even when they were freed it's an interesting question once you're freed then then what have you ever thought about that? Once you're free, then what? But like I said, before we even get to that point, I want us to understand some of the things that we may still be enslaved by. You know, a lot of us are enslaved by our, our past. The things that we did not achieve, the things that we've done wrong, the things that we regret, that we cannot let go of. Those relationships that went bad or that loved one that passed on, that we can't let go of. That job that we lost, the addictions that we have. Now we, we do have the addictions that everybody they, they love to just only focus on, you know, the drugs or alcohol addictions. But a lot of us got other addictions. We have food addictions. We have shopping addictions. We have insecurity addictions, believe it or not. We have all of these addictions or these things that are actually keeping us in bondage. Keeping us in the same place. You know... It's interesting that one of the big definitions of 
being free. Well, I, 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 it might not be the main definition, but the one that I, I heard a couple of years ago that has stuck with me because it, it means so much that it says when you are free, it means you have the ability to say no. Think about it. When you are free, you don't have to stay at that same place. You're free to go to how they say greener pastures. If you are free, you don't have to stay on that job because of the burdens of life that you have to have to go in and check in at nine and leave at six or seven. If you are free, you can say, I don't need a drink today. I can say no to that. If I am free, I can say no to those temptations because I'm not bound by this addiction or these things that are holding me in my same holding spot. You know, it's interesting that if we, if we really, if we really commit ourselves as slaves to the teaching of Jesus Christ, we're actually becoming free. And I know that sounds kind of crazy that if you enslave yourself, you actually free yourself. But that is what Jesus is teaching. And I will say by, this ain't something that I just read in the Bible, but this is something that I got the Boy Scout badge myself when I understood that when I dedicated my life to Christ, that I became free. Not of everything. Now some things, you know, um, um, I'm like you too. We all here together. Some things that we are in the process of becoming. And understand that we are, we might not made it to where we're trying to be at, but we are becoming transformed individuals, becoming better people, becoming reformed. We are experiencing a reformation in our lives. When, when, when I started this ministry, no, I was not equipped to be in this pulpit. I was not equipped to run a church. But I realized later that God doesn't employ the equipped. The equipped. He equips the employed. I'm going to say that just because I know I bummed it up, but I want you to really understand that that God doesn't pick the ones that are always skilled. He gives the skill to the ones that he has chosen and picked. He gives that spiritual gift to those that he has chosen. And the ones that commit themselves to be slaves to his teaching. And once you become that slave to the teaching, you are free and free indeed. But then I got to ask the question, but now what? But now, but now what? Or better yet, what's next? After you are freed and delivered and you, 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 you've cut those, those bondages that was holding you back, you've been released from your chains and you're free now. What do you do? What do you do? You know, it's interesting. Some people, some people aren't used to being free and they aren't comfortable with it. You know, it's funny if you read your history when, when some of our ancestors were set free, they said, go. Well, I'm going to go. Well, you can still work here. And they think they called them indentured servants or something of that nature. But it's, it's interesting that some of us now are free, but it's like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do now that, that God has freed me. And I'm asking you, do you turn over and start trying to free others? Are you like a, 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 a Harriet Tubman, in a sense, of the religious world? 
Can you go back and find the ones that are enslaved? And just like she said, I could have saved a lot more people if they had known that they were slaves. With a newfound freedom, can you go back and help someone else move from being in bondage to these things that we are in bondage in? And sometimes, I, and I'll be honest with you, that some people don't, they don't want to be free. They really, if anything, they want to understand how did they become a slave? How did they get into this situation? How did my life come to this point? But then there's others that are saying, I'm trying to move forward in my life. There's others that are saying that I'm trying to build a new life. You know, it's interesting. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and it's, 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 some people want to unpack and some people want to impact. I'm going to explain this again. Some people want to unpack and others want to impact. You see, I'm a, I'm a certified life coach, okay, and, and, and really it's with church um, coaching that and it's a process of, you know, teaching people and helping people move forward in their life. I am not a psychiatrist. I don't have that degree. I don't have that patience either. But there's a difference between the two. Because see, a psychiatrist is trying to unpack your past. They're trying to figure out or help you figure out why are you this way from 20 years ago when you saw your favorite pet get ran over and that traumatized you that you never wanted another pet in your life or something of that nature or you saw somebody get into a fight and didn't come out well so you have always been fearful of having arguments. I don't, I don't know but psychiatrists sit down and they try to unpack, unpack your past. What I try to do is impact your future. Where are we going next? The, the, the question is, but now, or just to fill it out, but now what's next? In your life, now what's next? God has freed you. Are you listening to him now to find out what is next? on your agenda, on your time period of what God is trying to do for you? Are you listening to the Messiah or, or is the translation coming to you wrong? The tuning of your own ears or the reading of the words or the understanding of the communication that Jesus is putting on you right now. I wonder if sometimes we misread the information. I, 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 let me give you an example. Real example. I was in the grocery store with my wife the other day and she went to her side to go grab some stuff and I went to my side to go get my, some stuff and we couldn't find each other for a minute. But she sent me a text that I, I, I didn't read it in the grocery store because they didn't have reception or something like that. But I got in the car and I, and I read the text and she was sitting right beside me and I read it out loud and I was like, wow, you have some real elegant words. Cause she said, what I read was, I'm done waiting on you. Okay. And she said, no, no, no. There's a comma in there. It says, I'm done waiting on you. And it's like at first when I got it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. What? what? Really? She's like, no, no, it's a comma. And it really stuck with me because I wonder if, 
if we're not putting in that comma when Jesus is communicating with us, where we're, we're kind of thinking like God has forgot. God is saying, I'm done waiting on you to make a difference. No, God is saying, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Now, I'm waiting on you. So now what's next? You are free. Free indeed. But now what's next in your life? Now what's next in your challenge or your growth to be more closer to Jesus or to be a better disciple to your neighbor? Now what is next? If Jesus, you know, it's interesting, if Jesus died on the cross and didn't come back, we would have been kind of sitting there like, well, well, what's next? But he came back to explain to us that there, it don't end right here. I will send the Holy Spirit to you that will still give you the vision. And, and, and understand this. When you get the vision, because see, some of you right now will see yourself where God sees you at. And he will put that vision in your brain, in your mind, that image, that vision. You are made in God's image. Image is a picture in your mind. Where he says, I, I, I have a place for you. I have a destiny for you. And I will take you there. I will give you the vision to get there. Now, once you see this vision, write it down. Make it plain so it'll stay in your heart. Like his commandments, write it down so it'll stay in your heart. They say, tattoo the commandments on your heart. Prophets would eat the commandments because they wanted it inside of them. Put the vision inside of you and then understand that there's the question of, but what's next? When we talk about this Reformation Sunday, when Martin Luther, a 30 year old, goes and puts a, a conversation of questions on the board because he wants the truth. And they he didn't stop there. It was like, well, what's next? Let's talk about it. After talking about it, then what's next? Let's act upon it. What's next? When someone say, I need prayer and you pray for them, then what's next? More prayer, follow up. In your life right now, you might be at a what's next. And if you're not, then you might still be in slavery. Or you might be free and just not sure what to do next. Ask. And the door will be open. Well, I want to make sure I quote things right. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and ye shall find. If you don't know what's next, well, ask. But don't just sit there. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's, Scripture says, you know... Be still and know that I am God. But it doesn't always say be quiet. You can still ask the question while I'm being still, while I'm being patient. But I'm still asking the question now, Lord God, what's next? You know, one of the best ways to move up in your career is going to the supervisor or the boss saying, well, what can I do next? What, 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 what else do you have for me? What, what can I do next? Lord God, what is next? Who can I help out next? What can I do next. Let us pray. Lord God, I thank you for being a God of next. 
the God of tomorrow, the God of vision, the God that loves us unconditional, the God that frees us, the God that teaches us, the God that is patient with us, but the God that gives us grace. Lord God, I thank you for your spirit, for your love, and your mercy. Lord God, thank you. Amen. My Redeemer has saved me from sin. My soul
With confidence in God's saving grace, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who cry out for grace and mercy. Let us pray. God, though we may try to free ourselves from all the evil that surrounds us, remind us that you have given us Jesus as the way to everlasting freedom. Guide us as we search for your will and direction in the new age ahead of us. Send your Holy Spirit to guide all people who are searching for the truth and lead them to the source of all truth, Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We also ask for your blessing upon reformers in society and for all those who work to bring justice and peace in this troubled world. Guide governments and leaders everywhere and inspire them in your truth so that all times and in all places your will may be done. Let each of us be reformed as your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, give refuge and strength to those in need of your help. Take away their fears and make them whole. We pray for those who long for healing. Be especially with those we know personally to be in want. Those on our prayer list and those we lift to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we trust that by your spirit, you will always lead your church forward in truth. Guide us and lead us so that your reforming word may give light and truth to the world. Hear these and all of our spoken and silent prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have just a few announcements for today, so be sure to watch the video announcements at the end of service for any additional information. We'd like to say happy birthday to Richard McLemore, whose birthday is on November 6th. Join us for our Fact Check Bible Study on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom, where we research and uncover real biblical facts to see what the word really says. If you have any biblical questions you're confused about, email them to Lutheran at gmail.com. Now we are worshiping in person on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. here at St. Mark. So if you've been following us on online, come and visit us here at the church. We're looking forward to seeing our virtual church members right here in the building. So please come out and fellowship with us. It's offering time when we ask you to support the ministry and mission of St. Mark. Now this is a free will offering. We're just asking you to bless God's work through this congregation. So to all of our members and those who join us weekly online, if you have been blessed by this ministry, bless us in your giving through your online banking, cash app, Venmo or the U.S. mail. And we thank you all so very much for your support of our church ministry. Let us pray. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given to us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Since we are justified by God's grace through faith, let us confirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The question for the week, I think you already know it. It's what's next? Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>